What is cooking all my ecom giants? We are back for another Shopify review. And today we're going to talk about Shopify's 10th largest store, Pier 1. So if anyone isn't familiar, I'm sure you know the classic brand Pier 1. They went into bankruptcy a couple of years ago. A private equity company bought them and respun them out as a DDC brand on Shopify. So let's get right into it with the one thing that they do as a real masterclass here. So we're going to dive right through the funnel to show you what their cart experience looks like, because I think this is a really valuable piece that you should look for inspiration for your store. So when we add a product to cart, this flyout comes out showing you what you've added in your cart and that typical flyout experience. I think it's very unique to come from the top down versus the right rail in. But what, something to really take inspiration from and think about is their upsell that they're presenting in the cart is actually their subscription program. So if you've been listening to the other programs recently, I talked about Steve Madden recently and how they're positioning their SM pass as this paid subscription program for service offerings. Pure One's doing the same thing with this Pure One Rewards. So you pay 10 bucks a month and you automatically are included in this program where you get 10% off free shipping on your products as well as free returns. And it's all included in here. And so what's really, what's really impressive about this is that they're including a digital product here, right? This is 10 bucks a month. That is pure margin for them. They're going to offer you free shipping on specific items anyway. They're just bringing that down to incentivize you to buy more. And that's the key is they're presenting these service propositions for, for as a paid service that you pay for. And as everyone's just good drafting off the Amazon Prime innovation, but it's gonna incentivize you to buy more. They know that they have such a large product catalog. They're constantly bringing new products in that the value to them of, even if they lose money on this, like let's say that this $10 is completely unprofitable every month, getting you to come back and buy every month or even just more frequently throughout the year is gonna drive your, the customer's LTV and subsequent value so high that it will end up being worth it. And it'll create that monogamy that so many brands are trying to have. So I think this is really brilliant. It's really simple. You can continue to view the cart or check it out. Also, what I really like is that if you, in the UX, if you do opt out of it, it then will show you your costs and what, and they still present it to you as the option of what you could be saving right next to it. The thing that's really going to be easy to steal for your brand, jumping back to the homepage, is on their homepage, the way that they design it is that typical, okay, how can we just keep entering people into the funnel, into the funnel, into the shopping experience, their featured collections, bestsellers, specific types of items that they know are popular, but then they promote their marketing channels. So, right, if you scrolled through four to five sections of the homepage and you're not ready to dive into the product experience, they're getting you on places where they know they can retain your attention to get you to come back and buy. So they're pushing you to download the app, which I'm sure they're offering an incentive here to make a purchase. I'm sure they're going to be pushing you a lot of notifications to get you to come back and buy. And then they push you to their blog. Right? Like some people just aren't going to be ready to buy. And if you've done a good job filtering them through that top part of your homepage to get them into the funnel, put them in a place where you can nurture them, put them in a place where you can capture their contact info and get them to come back and buy more because it costs so much to get the customer's attention and get them to the site that you need to do everything you can to make sure that they stick around. So the one area of a uh, I would say more of discussion for Pier One more than anything, because I don't know if this is an improvement. It seems to be a very intentional strategy, which I think is a very interesting test, is putting all of the brands that this portfolio manages on the top banner of the site that's persistent across the site. And I have mixed feelings about this. I think it's a fascinating test if you know that the customers who are buying from all the brands buy from the other brands as well. Personally, I would be shocked if the same people who are buying from a Models are buying from a Dress Barn and a Steinmart, but maybe it works and maybe there's something that I'm missing there. But to me, that would be the one area that I would really want to test because I feel like you're just driving a lot of traffic to other places. And to me, it seems like it's very distracting. Like, okay, I came to Pier 1, maybe intentionally coming to buy something specific, but then I get distracted by Dress Barn. And maybe that's the goal. Like maybe they're just intentionally trying to cycle traffic from one store to another, but it's really interesting to me. And that's one thing that I'm, I'm kind of questioning about the site experience.